giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, in the fun everyone in the fun universe, and welcome to the show where the tea is sweeter and the bots are hotter than the Florida sun. It's the Week One Southeast Sweet Tea Region Recap Show. Now to introduce ourselves, my name is John, and I'm Marshall. I'm Brian, and I'm Griffin. If you're just tuning in for the first time, we're about to give you a rundown of the events that just took place over the course of Week One down here in the southeastern region of the U.S. Then we're going to follow that up with a little bit of discussion and previews for next week. And then finish things off with the FRC Top 10 Southeast Edition for Week 1, as voted by the community in the FRC Top 25 polling. So without any further delay, why don't you kick things off for us, Marshall? Absolutely. So this weekend was Palmetto, and 63 teams from eight states made the trip to the Myrtle Beach Convention Center to compete at the Palmetto Regional. Things may have started out slow with many of the favorites struggling early on with power cells jamming, climbers not working as expected, and one team even reporting their limelight was tracking the diamond plating of another robot. However, after 95 matches where the first seed was constantly up for grabs, it was ultimately the undefeated Team 694 Staples from New York City who ranked first with a 2.33 ranking score. They would select last year's winners, fourth ranked 4020 Cyber Tribe from Kingsport, Tennessee, with the first selection and round out their alliance with the 19th ranked 1758, the Technomancers from Florence, South Carolina. The full offense strat strategy from the first seed served them well in quarters with scores of 216 and 160, despite less than stellar autonomous performances. However, in the semifinals, they were able to get their autonomous routines dialed in and achieve scores of 254 and 243 with the former a match where they achieved stage three capacity. However, uh, were unable to get the position control. Many were prepared for a showdown between the first seeded alliance and the second seeded alliance made up of teams 3824 HVA Rohoctics, Team 4451, Robots Garage, and Team 3489, Category 5. However, this would not be the alliance to proceed to finals. 2614, Mountain Area, Mountaineer Area Robotics, Mars, pulled a bit of the old secret sauce in first selecting the 32nd rank 108 Sigma Cat Robotics, and rounding out their third seed alliance with another sleeper pick, the 31st ranked 342, the Burning Magnetos. The third seed also ran a full offense style, achieving scores of 171 and 144 and quarters. In semifinal 2-1, the second seed was forced to play one offense and two defense after a mechanical failure on 38-24 shooter. The tough defense led to 342 losing their bumper and being disabled, as well as neither alliance achieving a climb during the last second scramble. The third seed squeaked out a win, 85-95. In semifinal 2-2, the second seed ran just 38-24 on defense and utilized 34-89 for low goal scoring. This change in strategy, as well as a triple versus double climb endgame, led to the second seed winning another close match, 159-140. Semifinal 2-3, both teams employed the same strategies as semifinal 2-2, and it looked like the second seed would achieve another victory. However... 3824's mechanical gremlins were just too much, and after they were not able to climb as well as keeping the shield generator from leveling, this was enough to swing the match to the underdog third seed with a score of 134 to 145 and send them into the finals. Despite full offense being what got them to the finals, the third seed would instead utilize short mechanism drive 342 for defense on the first seed. While effective in the beginning portions of the match, ultimately the first seed adapted quickly to only shooting from safe zones and were able to win the finals uh, one with a score of 206 to 161. 
The third seed would employ the same strategy in finals two, and unfortunately for them, the result would be the same. After a victory spin from 1758, the first seed would keep 694's undefeated season alive with a score of 221 to 159. A hard-fought effort from our finalist alliance of 2614, 108, and 342, who we will see next uh, compete at the Smoky Mountain Regional in Week 5, uh, at least for 2614 and uh, 108, and then Rocket City Regional uh, Week 6 for 342. And then congratulations to the Champion Alliance of 694, 4020, and 1758, who we will next see at the Hudson Valley Regional in Week 4 for Team 694, and then the Rocket City Regional in Week 6 for 4020, as well as the Smoky Mountain Regional in Week 5 for 1758. And then finally, congratulations are in order for rookie all-star winner 8137 Biting Bulldogs from Georgetown, South Carolina, the Engineering Inspiration Award winner 3653 The Bobcats from Hollywood, Florida, and the first judges award they have won in 10 years as a team. And then finally, the chairman's award winner, 3824 HVA Rohoptics from Knoxville, Tennessee. And then off to uh, PCH here. So, as you probably expected, things got off to a pretty slow start down in Gainesville. Alliance scores in the 30s and below were unfortunately very common at the early goings. However, Team 6919, the Commodores, showed why, once again, just like last year, they knew what was most important in the early season. By match number two, they were already scoring power cells, and they climbed on the generator switch, which helped them solo carry a match even with one no-show partner and another that didn't move. But this was the only the beginning of their journey. Another team that impressed me was 4188 Columbus Space Program. They also showed that their design choices would pay off early as well as they kept the robot simpler with the taller design. They were one of the first teams to climb at the event as well. And they had one of the most impressive autonomous modes from right off the, the starting line. Other teams had a few more gremlins to fight. Uh, a favorite in the tournament, usually 1746 Auto spent a lot of the early rounds with either power cells jamming in the robot or issues that left the robot motionless. And another team that you would have expected to do really well, 1414 IHOT, apparently decapitated the turret off of their robot in another match. It became clear as the qualifications went on that the teams with the solid autonomous and climbing skills were going to rank at the top. At the end of the quals, the two most consistent teams in that category were, of course, 6919, the Commodores, and 4188, Columbus Space Program. With over 300 auto points and 500 climb points, respectively, which was a fair bit higher than any other team in the field, they decided to pair up together as the first selection for the Commodores at rank one. They chose to pair up with 6829 Ignite Robotics as their dedicated defender to round out their team. Now, this alliance faced little resistance in the quarters and semis until they reached the finals, where things got a lot closer. There, they would face off against the third seed alliance, captained by 4189, the Chargers, with a solid climb and some good solid autonomous as well, and their first pick, 1746 Auto, a team that always makes it to the finals at Gainesville no matter what. Their robot was firing on almost all cylinders at this point, and they were shooting very well. And their second pick, 56-51, the Maynard Jackson Robodogs. Now, the early going in the finals was very close, as each alliance was able to match each other fairly closely with the power cell scoring. However, it became extremely obvious that the third seed alliance, while being better at scoring power cells due to the fast cycles from 1746, they were not matching the number one seed's double climb. Thus, the, uh, the Red Alliance swept the finals with a 2-0. Now, those of you who tuned in last week may remember that we had a segment called This or That where we discussed the likelihood of two events occurring. Number one was, was 69-19 going to take home a second consecutive gold medal at Gainesville? Or the other being 1648 G3 Robotics taking home another chairman's award? Well, as it turned out, both things happened. Congrats to G3 on their chairman's award win and 6919 for achieving a gold silver cling bling with not only their wing win, but the engineering inspiration award win as well. And of course, congrats to our rookie all-star winner, 8083 ALX Robotics, who had an impressive rookie robot that landed them at fourth seed 
in the rankings and a semifinalist appearance at their first ever event. So, Brian, how were things up in North Carolina? In the first North Carolina district this past weekend, we had 29 teams compete at the Wake County District event. We had 58 matches across the two days with an average score of 72 points throughout the quals and the highest score, highest match score being 180 points. We had no unicorn matches here at Wake County, but 12 alliances throughout quals were able to climb for the bonus RP. When the dust settled at the end of Claws, the number one seat at the event was Team 5160 Chargers with a 12-0 record and a 2.41 ranking point average. The only team to get above that 2.33 ranking point average that we talked about last week in This or That. This team built an effective every bot that could cycle fast and consistently climb during endgame. However, they were not the only team to go undefeated. Sitting at the number two spot, we had Team 5511 Cortex Robotics with a 12-0 record and a 2.14 ranking point average. This team is an effective high goal shooter that can sink shots into the upper port with about an 80% accuracy. They also had a very accurate autonomous, sinking in all three preloaded shots throughout Qual's missing only one that bounced back out in qualification matches. So, headed into the playoffs, the number one seed alliance grew from teams 5160 and 5511 after we, after previously seeing their compatibility together from playing two matches in quals that came to dominating victories of 140 to 47 and 143 to 109. They went on to choose the 22nd ranked team, 7763 Carboro Robotics, a three-ball, one-point robot that would wind up as the Alliance's defense robot throughout the playoffs. The Alliance put on a really good show all the way up the bracket with scores consistently in the three digits and the lowest score of 100 points. At the end of quarters, it looked like the Alliance to give the first seed a run for their money was going to be the number seven seed Alliance of 435 Robo Dogs, 6496 Area 27, and 6908 Infused. However, due to some complications in semifinal one and a completely dominating finish from the third seed alliance the seventh seeds run ended there going into the finals the easy sweeping number one seed versus the triple offensive third seed alliance of the fast cycling and scoring teams of 6502 dark side 4561 terror bites and 5607 team firewall the first match was a resounding victory for the number one alliance with a double climb and a balance while the number three alliance was just not able to get their robots up off the floor. And the second final, the second finals match wound up the same way with the number three seed not able to get those robots off the carpet to get them that win. But congratulations to teams 5160, 5511, and 7763 for getting the win at this district event. Also getting some nice hardware this past weekend, Team 4828 Robo Eagles winning the District Chairman's Award and 4561 Terabytes getting the double bling of event finalists and engineering inspiration. Congrats to all teams and well played to all the teams at Wake County District event. Now on to Griffin with the loadout on what happened at Chesapeake. All right. So this weekend, 36 teams met at Battlefield High School for the highly anticipated Chesapeake District Haymarket event. Out of 76 qualification matches, none resulted in a fully charged shield generator, but many came up with the climbing RP. After the matches, sitting at the top was 623 Oten Cougar Robotics, the only team to hit uh, 2.0 exactly for their ranking score. They quickly picked up the usual top dog and good friend of theirs in 2363 Triple Helix. They then rounded out their alliance with 686 Bovine Intervention. This alliance handily won their quarters advanced to the sem and advanced to the finals after a tiebreaker for the semis er, against the number five seed. On the other side of the bracket, the number two seed of 4472 Supernova was poised to make the highest potential bot at the event in 836 Robo Vs. However, they instead picked a team out of left field in 1895 Lambda who was who had placed 21st in the rankings. This left many eyebrows raised. They then rounded out this uh, alliance with 2421 RTR Robotics. Or er, after this like big eyebrow raising moment, the number two C proceeded to prove that consistency over potential would be successful as they handedly won their quarters, semis, and eventually the final in two matches each. Congratulations to Team 4472 and Team 2421 on their second 
wins at this event and to team 1895 on their first blue banner in their history. Congrats also to team 1111 Powerhawks on chairmans and to team 2363 for EI on that double silver cling bling. Undisputed best robot of the event was 836 Robobees, and underdog of the event was 539 Titans, who I want to take a little bit of time to recognize, because in 2016, they had a tragic set of losses when one mentor died in a car crash and another was lost due to cancer. After that, the team had been struggling to do well, and seeing, or seeing a full redo of their team roster and mentors. To finally see them at a competitive level is really amazing to me. Yeah, so that's a really good story to know that they're doing better. So moving on to a little bit of discussion, I just want to really quickly go around the horn and ask, when do you think at all in our respective regions, states, peak districts, whatever, you think we're going to ever see a stage three, considering that California and Michigan have already had a try at it and both of them failed to do so in week one? I don't know if it's going to happen at all in Peachtree until May Carrollton, which is the most stacked pre-district state championship event or state championship. It's going to be one or the other for us. I don't know at all. What do you guys think for your areas? I think for, at least for North Carolina, it's probably going to be week four, maybe week five, and definitely a district champ. I definitely think for Chesapeake, it's going to be a long time. Like, <laughs> it, I don't, I don't think, I think it's not going to be until Elims at Digital Champs. Because the thing is, at Haymarket, people weren't even going for the wheel when they ha- even had the ball capacity, and so, like, it's not, so it's not much to see about that. So, I highly doubt anybody will be going for it now. Um, here in Florida, we might see something in Orlando. I mean, Orlando's pulled a lot of hat tricks out on me in previous years. Um, there's a lot of double uh, teams that are going to both Orlando and South Florida. So if it doesn't happen in Orlando, the teams that did compete in Orlando will most definitely do it in South Florida. Interesting. Well, we'll have to wait and see. You never know until it happens. So next, uh, Brian's going to give us a count, or I'm sorry, not Brian, Griffin is going to give us a countdown (laughs) of the FRC Southeast Top 10 as voted by the community this week in the FRC Top 25 poll. You got to check out that show tomorrow. Is it tomorrow night? I believe it is. Um, So please remember to vote if you believe a team should be considered prior to now. (laughs) Your chances passed you. However, uh, you can always vote in next week's poll. So take it away for us, Griffin. All right, so coming in number 10 is 6919, the Commodores from Albany, Georgia. Winners and e- or engineering inspiration winners at Peachtree Gainesville event. Uh, number nine is 4075, the Robo Tigers from Conway, South Carolina. Semi-finalists at Palmetto. Then at number eight is 342, the Burning Magnetos from North Charleston, South Carolina. The finalists at Palmetto. Then coming in at number seven, 4188, Columbus Space Program from Columbus, Georgia. Winners at Peachtree Gainesville. Then at number six, 108 Sigma Cat Robotics from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Finalists at Palmetto. Then coming at number five, 1895 Lambda Corps from Manassas, Virginia. Winners at Haymarket. Then 623, coming at number four, 623 Cougar Robotics from Vienna, Virginia. Finalists at Haymarket. Then at number three, 2363 Triple Helix from Newport News, Virginia. Finalists at an EI at Haymarket. Then at number two, 836, the RoboBees from Hollywood, Maryland. The semifinalists at Haymarket. And at number one is 4472, Supernova from Woodbridge, Virginia. Winners at Haymarket. Well, congrats to all those teams for getting their uh, teams voted into the top 10 for the Southeast region this week. Next, um, we're going to give you a couple of previews. Starting out, Marshall, why don't you tell us what you're looking forward to seeing at Pembroke? Up, oh, you're muted, bud. You got it? Yep. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For the North Carolina Pembroke event, uh, it's going to be the first showing for all but four of the teams competing there. Those who have already had a chance to work out their kinks are uh, 1225 The Gorillas, 3196 Spork, uh, both competed in Peachtree uh, at the Gainesville event this past weekend, as well as 435 The Robo Dogs and 7265 Skeleton Crew, who attended the Wake County event. Strong teams to look out for are 1533 uh, Triple Strange who have won the district championship for the past two years. 
and then the flying platypi who uh, are going to be there as well um, and are likely to do well. They've been uh, either paired with or against Triple Strange uh, for the past two years uh, in a limbs. Other notable teams are 3506 Yeti, 3737 the Roto Raptors, and a recently strong team visiting from out of state, 4541 the Cavaneers from Severn, Maryland. Next up, we have the Bethesda event, which is considered the weakest field of Chesapeake from what I heard, stats-wise at least. Um, we're looking at top dogs coming in as teams... Oh, I lost the page. <laughs> as team 1885 Elite Robotics I like. team... I light. Sorry, I light. I'm not from Chesapeake. <laughs> 888, the Robotiators. And 40, 449, Blair Robot Project. And 2534, Lumber, Lumberjacks. Other, other contenders we have teamed 2537, Space Raiders. And... 24-21 RTR Robotics, who won this past weekend. And coming down from New Jersey, we have Team 4242 Fresh Tech and 2180 Zero Gravity. All right, so coming to the Richmond event, this is going to boast the majority of the strong teams that dominate basically the southern portions of uh of Chesapeake. So top dogs coming in are 384, 401, 1086 look to be really good in the week zero event. 1262 has looked to reveal some impressive shooting. And then also to shout out to my own team, 6334, who is looking very, very good at this moment. Other contenders to look out for are 346 Robohawks, 1599 Circuitry, 1895 Lambda Core, who were last week's winners, 2106 Junkyard Dogs, and 6802 Mean Caymans. All right. And then the next week, go down to the Peachtree Dalton event, where uh, it's going to be the first downing of the year for two of last year's reigning district champions and 4910 East Cobb Robotics and 2974 Walton Robotics. But they'll have to face the likes of some pretty strong veteran teams like 1311 Cal Robotics, 1771 North Gwinnett Robotics, 4026 Global Dynamics, and, of course, a few other teams, my teams, of course, 1102 Make and Magic, state finalist Alliance captain last year, and our sister team, uh, the second-year team in 7883 Cross Creek Razorbots. You can see a little preview of our robot there on the screen now. <laughs> it's uh, going to be an interesting weekend, and I can't wait to see how things turn out. Uh, so right before we finish things up for tonight, I'm just going to uh, give the chat a little bit of a chance to throw out what they think in this case. We're going to do a last-minute this or that preview with the three regions coming up on the line uh, with... North Carolina, Chesapeake, or Peachtree, what does chat and you guys think is going to end up having the highest unpenalized score? I'm going to go with Chesapeake. Yeah, no, I would, I definitely have to agree with that for the fact that for this week we're coming, we're about to have like the big dogs of the South. It's for Copperhead, Sparky, 63, or Illuminati, 10, or Blue Cheese. It's like, no disrespect at all to like the other districts, but it's for the fact that we're having like the kings of the south. Yeah, as far as this particular peach tree event goes, we have some heavy hitters typically at the top, but we're not sure yet as to a lot of people's robots. To be honest, I haven't seen much about 4910's robot at all this year, whereas usually they had a reveal previously. And, of course, all I've seen uh, from Cal, or not Cal, but North Gwinnett is their CAD. So I really don't know anything. Oh, actually, I've seen Global Dynamics, too. I've seen pictures. I haven't seen video. And I know how my robot's working, but you'll <laughs> have to wait and see for that one. <laughs> you never know until you know. So with that, I think that's all we have time for tonight. But thanks to everyone for hanging out with us. And, of course, fun needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. So please consider giving us your support by joining Fun Nation with a subscription of Bits on Twitch or a subscription, of course, in general, <laughs> or becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. Or just let people know in first about that this is the place to get information that your team needs. Don't forget to check us out on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and here, of course, live on Twitch. 
if you're watching live, our next show is going to be Mouth of the South. On behalf of Marshall, Griffin, Brian, myself, and of course, our magician of a producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you all for tuning in. And thank you to all of our moderators in the chat. We'll talk to you next week on the FRC Southeast Sweet Tea Region Recap. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.